So, um, hi, I'm Mike DeBoer. I'm here to talk about uh, Mozilla Firefox, and that's basically you know, two uh, nouns, Mozilla and Firefox. I'm going to go and dive into those two uh, different specifically and how we make shit work. And um, since this is, you know, I heard this is called UXDX, um, I, was, I was intrigued and, and, and wanted to focus on the UX and, um, and interaction um, and um, how, we, how our UX team integrates and works together with our engineering teams. Um, I hope that will interest you to a certain extent. So um, first, let's go into, back to the basics. What's Firefox again? Let's reiterate. Then second, uh, what's my place in this maelstrom of stuff in the internet? Well, that's, that's a lot of stuff. No, feel free. Just please feel free to sit down. Um, challenges, things we face daily. So that's just naming a few, not all of them, because we'll be here tomorrow. And um, plan de campagne, which is French for, um, uh, well, stuff to do. And uh, or stuff we do, and um, basically highlighting our unique approaches. Conclusion: Where I try to say something um, about what I've what I've said before during the talk, and also try to like peek in the future a little bit. Um, and then it's time for for questions, of course. And uh, yeah, ask me anything for real. That's totally fine. Hit me up after the talk as well, uh, preferably with me holding a beer. Uh, I'm much easier, much easier to talk to. Um, all right, what's Firefox again? It's um, an, an internet browser, uh, similar akin to Google Chrome, which probably most of you are using. Makes me really s sad. So this is also like one of the motivators for me coming here is actually to drive people back to Firefox. Like I'm, I'm going to say to you that it's actually fantastic stuff, and you should really switch over. But for re really, um, yeah, we understand. We are the underdog. Um, basically, it's um, it's it's Chrome that has all the market. Uh, recent February numbers for uh, netmarketshare.com indicate, and those are not perfect numbers, we used, internally we actually use different uh, statistics to measure our reach, but you know, these are the best available publicly. So let's just go with that. And um, it says that it's growing, you know, upwards, you know, if you round up, it's 70% for Chrome total market share, and only about 10 for, uh, or now well, let's round down then, okay, sure, 9% for Firefox. Um, really, Really, um, shortly as to why that might be the case. So why aren't we that much better and beat Chrome uh, silly? Well, um, that's because a couple of years ago we were in fact worse than Chrome in terms of speed and they, they launched the new browser. So they were with a fresh code base, relatively fresh code base, they were able to make huge strides of progress in little time. and. Uh, we were working in our old crafty code base, trying to make things happen uh, with uh, with um, uh, long iterations. Uh, so we weren't able to keep up, put it, to put it simply. Um, and Chrome beat us on all on all fa on all uh, on all fields. Um, and they had a massive, massive marketing push. So you know, obviously, Chrome is backed by Google or its Google property, um, and they want you to consume ads. And what's better to serve your ads were for is to actually control the browser you're using, the one gateway to the internet. Um, so that's their, their motivator. Um, and through that, they have massive, massive m amounts of money to repaint bus stops, to you know own planes, to just do everything in their marketing power possibilities to get you to use Chrome. And you know when you're an easy target, you're slow, uh, your UI is outdated. Well, then, you know, this happens. Um, but that doesn't mean we didn't start fighting back. So um, oh wait, sorry. Um, so with uh, Firefox 57, we relaunched as Firefox Quantum, and um, are now on par or faster 
than Chrome actually is. Um, along with a UI revamp, which I'm particularly proud of because I worked on that as, a, as I was a, still a, a software engineer back then. Um, we have over 330 million active users. So when we push an update to Firefox, it reaches 330 million users. Um, and you'll see more about, you'll, re, you'll learn more about that when we, I talk about challenges because that actually you know, uh, yields a number of challenges to have that amount of users um, downloading and using your product daily. And in fact, we are, and have been for a long time already since its inception probably, uh, been the largest open source project in the world. And that's something not a lot of people know, but the project is massive. Um, we actually are one of the main drivers for div uh, DVCS, like distributed version control systems, to improve their performance because they can't cope with the Mozilla code base. Git, for example, when we sh started to migrate from CVS to Git or to DVCS, Git wasn't an option at the time. It, was, it just, you know, borked. It just failed miserably. Uh, so we had to choose for, or we went with Mercurial because it performed reasonably. And now it actually performs really, really nicely. Uh, Facebook thinks so as well. They use it too. Um, Firefox is a melting pot of, of technologies as well. So it's the birthplace of industries changing programming languages. Uh, one of them you all know probably is JavaScript, invented in 1995 by Brendan Eich, um, who then later on became our CTO, uh, had to leave, sadly, and now is the CEO of Brave, one of our competitors. You know, shit happens over time. Um, but then we did another, another breakthrough, which in uh, parallel programming, um, and that was the creation of a language, a systems programming language called Rust. And that probably does ring a bell somewhere here and there. Um, it's one of the biggest trending languages right now, um, and uh, we are not even the biggest consumers. They have teams at Facebook and Google hundreds of engineers working on secret projects that I'm not allowed to share, um, uh, working with Rust only. So it has huge momentum. And then we have Gecko, which is our layout and rendering engine. It's bundled with our JavaScript just-in-time interpreter, uh, or just-in-time compiler, I have to say. Um, and also hosts a new web technology, which is WebAssembly, which is the web version of assembly of the lowest level of programming language you can get. Um, it is particularly loose, useful for uh, computing intensive applications, oops, like gaming engines. They do a lot of, a lot of uh, calculations on matrices and you know, um, offload a lot of their stuff uh, through GP to GPU pipelines and stuff like that. So um, Gecko the engine also encapsulates the internet as it's shown to you. It's, it's presented by to you. I have to hurry up. All right. Uh, it's also a movement. So we have a manifesto, which is, um, we, as we were one of the first open source projects, we also have uh, a couple of rules that binds us and uh, uh, to ensure that the internet is a global public resource open and accessible to all because Mozilla, and therefore Mozilla Firefox, is a non-profit, unlike Google, who's developing a Google Chrome, for example. Uh, we went from Netscape, which was then closed source, to Mozilla, which is then open source. And that was a while ago. It was 93, I believe. Um, we have a foundation part and a corporation part. Foundation part is basically our, um, our biggest client. We make Firefox to, for the foundation. They give us the job. They give us the... the, like the uh, they don't say like, yeah, we need this feature and this feature, but basically it's like, you know, in order to fulfill our mission to keep the internet open, we need you to build technology, to make technology, to make that happen, and make that reality. So what's my place here? Um, so I started as an engineer um, six or seven years ago. I started young, self-taught, got caught, can't escape. Yikes. So uh, I got myself into, into trouble and uh, started doing software engineering. Uh, of course, I'm not completely self-taught because it doesn't exist. I got like, I met great mentors in the way um, that helped me get to where I am. 
Um, started with uh, PHP, of all things, and uh, did Zoomilo Gallery, like that was a while ago. eBuddy.com, which you might remember, was on the canals here at the Kaisersgracht. And HX.org Cloud9 IDE, which was an online development environment in the cloud. Um, and that was also here on the Kaisersgracht. Um, I got funding multiple times, uh, so I got to live the startup life. Uh, we did company ski trips and all kinds of crazy shit. Now, and Mozilla is much more, you know, mundane maybe even, um, in that kind of thing, in that sense. So, um, became a complex JavaScript application enthusiast, obviously, and the mentor story comes back and again and again. Now, I'm uh, having done a couple of management gigs uh, at the startup, in during the startup phases, I'm now a manager at Mozilla back again, and um, I manage a search team which is, in fact, the team that brings in all of the revenue, all of the $500 million of revenue that we have to spend on building Firefox and all our other products. Um, so there are organizational challenges that we face, and we have to find non-conventional solutions due to our organization structure. Um, and um, this is going to be a recurring one, so remember it, it's agile but different because of that. So here are the challenges. Um, divided into three columns. First is time zones. We work remote. There is a lot of remote workers. Like 60, 40, 46 percent of our workforce works remote, and it's a workforce of about, no, let's say, give or take, 1,050 people. Um, and 55 percent, you know, uh, obviously, then um, uh, work from an office. And 39% of that works outside of the US, spread over 14 countries worldwide. And that goes from New Zealand, Australia, Asia, Japan, China, to North America and, uh, and um, multiple offices in, Ber in, in, uh, in Europe, being Berlin and Paris. Unfortunately, not Amsterdam, so I have to work all alone from my office at home. <sighs> but not too lonely, because we have a nice video system that always works. <coughs> not really. Um, and we get together twice a year at the hands. So to cultures, it's taken open source seriously. We were one of the first open source projects. We are one of the founding uh, 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 partners and part of the EFF so for ages. So we have good ties with them. Uh, Electronic Frontier Foundations, the, the ones that try to keep your digital rights in, in order, intact somewhat, somehow. Um, and uh, really much based on uh, a participation models. So there's a lot of open source, com like uh, volunteer contributors coming in uh, from all over the world. Um, and um, we have to, you know, be able to cater such a diverse and uh, inclusive community. So there's, again, also many nationalities, religions, po traditions, and politics, but also genders they are rapidly increasing the amount of genders that you can have. So, uh, uh, just, just kidding, of course, but that's, uh, that's important um, to have an, an open, open community that accepts everything um, that you might come across in the real world. Process, we have a classic hierarchy of a CTO or CEO with a, you know, a bunch of you know, C-level organizations. There's a board that controls and you know, fact checks what the, what, the, what the senior directors are doing. And then we have a very large layer of middle management, which I'm part of. And uh, so due to this, there is a strong focus on individuality. Uh, actually, there's only tw 20 people or so working on the front end on Firefox, the UI that you see. Um, so it's largely based on trust. We trust in each individual to do their job accord, you know, according to what we discussed or to, or to what we agreed on, to what the, we each other committed to. Again, all trying to fit in an agile but differently a little bit uh, uh, structure. So our need to solutions, what are they? We have to make all the things asynchronous. So what that means is that we have to use our tools to basically um, 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 uh, co bridge the gap between time zones and countries, ge geographical locations that are so diverse. You have one team that can have members spread across the world. And of course, we try to group that a little bit, but you also need to, to like, get the, to the, your diversity goals. 
So um, that's interesting. So we use online tools as much as we possibly can to um, asynchronify, asyncify uh, communication. Uh, we have a dedicated video conferencing network. It's super important for you, if, especially if you're working from home, um, um, that, you're, uh, uh, that you have a, a semi-reliable, it's, it's super hard, it's the toughest problem in the world, maybe even to have something like that. I mean, um, we will have people on Mars earlier than, have it, than that we have a dedicated, you know, a really working video conferencing system. But still, what we have is relatively decent, um, unless my entire neighborhood goes on Facebook at the same time at pretty much solid five o'clock in, in, the, in the afternoon. Um, and uh, there's a strong focus on goals. Um, so, as you can imagine, getting all these, all these, all these obviously fantastic individuals gear up and, and, and move in the same direction, um, it's important to start working from top line goals and that um, um, goes down in a, in a, in a, in a pyramid-like uh, uh, structure shape down to individual goal setting. Uh, tools that we use, um, for example, are Bugzilla, which is Jira, <laughs> that everybody tends to know, but then Crude, and um, uh, uh, looks like back into like you're back in the 90s, uh, uh, but uh, but actually works pretty pretty damn well when you're into it. Um, whereas Jira fills me more often than it doesn't. Um, and MediaWiki, where uh, there's a large part of our organization that focuses on developer documentation. So the entire web API and JavaScript APIs are documented on MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, developer.mozilla.org, and uh, that's all wiki format. So uh, volunteers contribute, um, and it's an important part of keeping the internet open. Um, Trello, which is a team organization tool, um, much like a, a Kanban board where you move stickies across. Smartsheet.com is where we well, manage all our OKRs, our team level objectives, and our company level objectives, and, uh, and our objective like uh, breakdowns. Uh, the entire Google Sheet. So we produce an amount of Google documents that you won't believe. Uh, well, probably you do, because your organization does the same thing, probably. Um, uh, so yeah, um, Excel isn't dead. Everybody does this Google spreadsheet now uh, in the same way. Um, GitHub, large part of our development cycle is not on this monolithic mercurial um, repository, but we have many products, many, many projects, and a lot of them work, live on GitHub, actually. Um, we use Envision to share wireframes and designs, so that's a bit of our UX team coming in there, and Fabricator, which is a, a code review tool developed by Facebook. And that's just a, a, a sample of the full list. Um, focusing on culture, so uh, we do everything out in the open. We are our, uh, an open source organization. Uh, we live and breathe the open internet. Um, so everything we'll do, we do is uh, look through a looking glass. Um, we have to be aware that everything we do, touch or communicate, is visible to a huge community that um, uh, is, you know, behind you for the same values. Um, people, again, uh, especially as a people manager, um, it's, it's, it's a lot about people and diversity, as I touched upon before. And the value of a manifesto comes across again if you try, um, and it also touches on the having top level goals that's, you know, that's like down to, to the individual goals down the organization um, more broadly. Uh, and you have a single thing that binds you, that everybody stands behind, and um, an ide ideological belief that is um, uh, motivating you to, um, uh, you know, make your best effort. So we have a mix of agile going on because of this async structure that we have. Many remote workers. We have a project. Ma the project manager has the role of scrum master. Um, Product manager has the role of product owner, keeping track of product requirement documents, PRDs, and, um, and specifications, um, so, and also managing the backlog items. UX engineering is a scrum team, and uh, together with UX UR, user research, daily stand-ups are costly, so we don't often do them, because trying to get a team together spanning across multiple time zones is impossible. 
Um, so we do them, but we do synchronization meetings, sync up meetings once a week, and then we mostly communicate asynchronously through mail, IRC, or Slack, or whatever is most, most comfortable using. Planning poker sessions are costly. Again, planning a large session over multiple time zones is expensive. So we, they are rare. Business value game is costly, so also rare. Uh, process. This is the agile but, uh, but different nonsense. Um, the problem of the backlog. So the challenge is keeping the backlog rolling. Always keeping um, the backlog to a solid certain size that uh, the engineering teams always have enough items to work on to pick from when their sprint ends. Problem is that the product owner is responsible for this and solely responsible. So what our solution, proposed solution to this is, is to s apply the principle of cross-functional teams into backlog grooming. So instead of just focusing on the engineering team, that there should be an engineering team that takes in work and there's a UX person involved and there's a, a UR person involved and a project manager involved that does every, all the things. I, uh, time's up, sorry. Um, uh, so I have to time this differently. Um, um, uh, you actually uh, do the same thing, but then in a mirror, and then uh, also apply that to uh, the backlog creation projects process and specking process. So you have a product requirements document uh, that sets the, like the requirement and the features, which is usually meant to communicate upwards and um, uh, uh, to, to senior management about what you're doing, what your bigger plan is, if you need a stamp of approval, that kind of thing. Um, and the, whereas the goal of the backlog is actually to have actionable items on there that engineers can just pick up and go with and fill a sprint with. So that's the agile but different thing, is that um, we start off with a kickoff meeting that lasts time box to 30 minutes, where we look at the, uh, where we collect a set of requirements and uh, pull everything together and we spec out together as a team with UX, UR and engineering together with the product manager. We're uh, also co-signing that backlog document um, and a set of requirements that spans minimum one iteration, so one sprint length, usually two weeks or three weeks, and then uh, uh, preferably three sprints in, to in total. So this is the process, is how it starts, and uh, like I said, kick off, collect requirements, then you have different scoping sessions to prune your backlog items, and then the team picks one iteration out of that list and starts working on it. Advantage of this system is that it's asyncifiable, so people can just push in requirements from their field of expertise onto the uh, backlog document. And then during those different scoping sessions, you can just go through them and also estimate those backlog items. So um, let's skip the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and because otherwise I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be slapped instead of getting a beer after. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm open for any questions, but not just now because the next speaker is actually dying to talk as well. Uh, and uh, We can take one question just to keep the conversation going and then you're staying for the drinks, right? So you will be around. Yes, of course. So anybody has one spicy question for Mike? Thanks. Um, it actually feels like you're not really in a happy place. I'm wondering, what would you, what's the first thing you would like to change? Um, so, could you could you clarify? Now, please keep the, keep the mic. Could you clarify what you mean that I, uh, which area I don't seem happy in? Uh. No, not necessarily. I mean, I'm not in a happy place. Well, generally, I am. Well, users are using Chrome. Ah, that place. Um, that place, but also about the process, uh, working at home. Um, yes. I feel like tensions all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I call them challenges, but uh, yes, <laughs> yes, they, they, they are they're tensions. They cause tensions sometimes. So, um, yes, and that's actually the um, exciting part, or well, exciting not so much. Well, sometimes it's exciting part of uh, of. Uh, working like this. So like I'm 100% remote. I don't work in a, at an office, so I have to rely on, on digital tools to, to get my job done and to communicate with people. Um, so um, first part, how do we catch up to Chrome? Is um, to put the user first instead of the ads first, right? Google is focused on making money. That's all they do. They all they want to do. 
really. They, they actually only want to do that. And, um, and, and we don't necessarily want to do that. So um, even though we need money to be able to evolve and, 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 and fund our research and, uh, uh, and technology uh, uh, endeavors. So what we're going to focus on primarily this year, for example, is, um, is uh, tracking protection on by default so that we block tracking for all users right away. Uh, it also makes, it makes, makes the web faster, so hey, that's nice. Um, another part is um, um, a better integration so that you're not forced into silos, into verticals. You're not forced into Facebook and have to stay there. They're, they're not allowing you to leave ever, right? And also same for Google, uh, Google properties. So um, the idea is that we have our, use our own UI, like the awesome bar, like the address bar, to basically provide more, more uh, usable results. Get to your uh, things done there in the browser uh, where your focus is instead of being redirected to, uh, to one of those silos. So those are directions to get us to a more happy place. And then, yeah, our users need to be conscious choosers. We don't have billions of marketing money to spend. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's always going to be a, a tough call and a really hard problem. Um, and from the at-home thing, how do I change that? How I become more, mm -hmm. more happy with, uh, 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 yeah, this 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 way of working? I think that's um, part of it is not never going to subside um, unless I move to Silicon Valley. But I have made the the, the, the conscious decision not to do so. Um, so yeah, um, I'm actually more accepting, and basically what my remarks were more on the sarcastic side, I think. <laughs> Then they were actually trying to be really obviously, you know, over serious about it. Um, but it does propose challenges, pose challenges in, 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 in you know, in different styles of methods of working that you need to adopt. And remote working is going to grow, all right? It's going to be more common. We see that all, uh, all you know, five years over a period of the last five years. So 